archaeologists, after conducting multiple analyses, confirmed that Europeans used Egyptian mummies as food. There is an opinion that in narrow circles this is still practiced. Check out this video for this find and more. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. The Mysterious Cemetery of Frogs Archaeologists have unearthed a mysterious mass grave of frogs near an Iron Age house near Cambridge during archaeological excavations while carrying out roadworks. Amphibian bones were found among a huge number of other artifacts. It is reported that excavations were carried out in Bar Hill, where at the end of the first millennium BC there was a settlement of the Middle and Late Iron Age. Researchers know that frog bones can often be found at ancient sites, but their number in Bar Hill has baffled scientists, as analyses of the bones show that they all belonged to local species of reptiles, the common frog and the common toad. The researchers doubt that all these frogs could have simply been eaten by the locals. Although previous evidence has shown that amphibians were eaten during the Stone Age in Britain, there are no cuts or burn marks on the bones found to support this version. Traces of cheered grain were also found near the burial place. Archaeologists say that the locals processed the crop from beetles and aphids, perhaps the frogs were used as insect control. The alternative version is a tragedy. Scientists believe that the reptiles may have fallen into a hole they couldn't get out of during their spring migrations in search of water for breeding. In addition, extreme cold or illness could lead to mass death. Jewelry made from human bones Paleozoologists from Russia and Finland found jewelry made of human bones in three of 176 graves during excavations of a large burial ground on the South Olini Island, Karelia. They, along with other artifacts, were placed in the grave to accompany the deceased in the afterlife. Most often, the burials contained hunting accessories – stone knives, spearheads, harpoons and similar implements. However, in this burial ground there were also decorations, various pendants. Most often they were made from the bones and teeth of large predators, which characterized the owners of accessories as skilled hunters. Archaeologists examined 37 pendants and found that 12 of them were made from human bones. Judging by the shape and method of processing the bones, for the ancient masters there were no fundamental differences between the bones of animals and humans. For the manufacture of each pendant, a groove was made on top of a split of bone fragment, around which a rope was tied from a piece of leather. This, in particular, is evidenced by wear marks on the jewelry. So far, experts find it difficult to answer whether the bones of enemies or, on the contrary, relatives were used for pendants. In the latter case, decorations could express special respect for the dead. In Karelia, such items are found for the first time. Europeans ate mummies it can be hard to believe that some events really happened at some point in reality, as, for example, the fact that the inhabitants of Europe of the Middle Ages had for some time the habit of feasting on Egyptian mummies. Of course, not quite to feast on. The medieval people pursued somewhat different goals. From about the 12th century, the people actively used ancient Egyptian citizens, divided into small pieces or crushed to a state of powder. Since ancient times, people have used bitumen in everyday life, a product of oil weathering. They processed arrowheads used for the manufacture of kitchen utensils. It has also been used as a therapeutic agent, so even Pliny the Elder himself recommended it in combination with wine for the treatment of dysentery and severe cough. It was believed that bitumen relieves toothache and is effective for cataracts. The Egyptians used this substance to mummify their famous dad. It had the ability to penetrate deep into tissues, and over time it was difficult to distinguish where the bone was and where in fact the bitumen. Since its reserves in nature were depleted, the people came to the conclusion that it was quite reasonable to use mummies as a source of bitumen, and they began to actively search for and process them for the purpose of profit. Of course, just because something looks like a mummy doesn't mean it is a mummy. 
tsunami, as enterprising merchants quickly found an alternative way to satisfy customers' need for mummies, passing off well-done camel meat as it. Since the popularity of the practice persisted for quite some time, some medieval businessmen went further and began to make mummies from the bodies of recently deceased citizens. Given the improvement in techniques, the remake was indistinguishable from real ancient mummies' mummified bodies. Gradually, with the development of medicine, Europeans abandoned the practice of treatment with the help of mummies, and although no modern person, at least with a healthy psyche, would ever think of eating mummy powder, nevertheless, the turnover of the black market for mummies is estimated at about $3 billion. If selling the desire to earn money is quite understandable, then why do modern people buy mummies in general, decorate the house to show off antiquity to friends, or is it possible to use them to improve health today? Guide to the Afterlife on a Sarcophagus Back in 2012, archaeologists examined a burial in the Egyptian necropolis of Deir el-Barsha. Although much of its contents had been looted or destroyed by mold, they discovered that, that one of the sarcophaguses was inscribed with drawings from the ancient Book of Two Ways, a mysterious illustrated guide to the underworld. The researchers found that the tomb belonged to a woman of noble birth named Ankh. Despite the fact that the necropolis was looted and most of the valuable things were stolen from it, archaeologists managed to restore the images on two wooden panels of the sarcophagus, supplemented by several lines of hieroglyphic text. They turn out to be small sections of the Book of Two Ways. Modern archaeologists have determined that the text on the woman's sarcophagus may be the earliest known copy of the Book of Two Ways. The tomb is at least 4,000 years old. The Book of Two Ways is 1,185 spells and religious writings about the afterlife. Texts of the sarcophaguses, in turn, precede the later collection of funeral texts, the famous Book of the Dead. The Book of Two Ways is a kind of map of the journey of the deceased through the other world. In it, an unknown author depicted two zigzag lines, two routes by which the dead can reach the domain of Osiris through the darkness full of obstacles in the form of high walls, fire traps, and evil demons. Fragment of a Rare Viking Age Sword a Norwegian amateur archaeologist has discovered a fragment of a Viking-era sword with a metal detector. The scientist to whom he gave his find determined that this fragment complements a fragment of a hilt found in the same area in 2021 by another local enthusiast. The hilt, with traces of rich decoration, belonged to a heavy sword of a rare type in Norway, most likely made around 800. Double-edged swords, common during the Viking Age in most of Europe, Europe are called Carolingian. Although the hilt is badly damaged, remnants of rich decoration can be seen on it. The hilt was covered with a geometric ornament of silver and yellow, and the ends of the gilded guard were made with great skill in the form of animal heads in the German animal style. It was common in Northern Europe around 550-1050 during the late Iron Age and the Viking Age. Based on the features of the ornament, as well as the shape and size of the hilt and guard, Hard, scientists have suggested that the sword belongs to type D, according to Peterson's classification. Swords of this type were among the heaviest and most ornate, and they are very rare. Of the approximately 3,000 Viking Age swords found in Norway, only about 20 are of type D. Smashed their heads and threw them into a well. The city of Nida was the capital of a part of the Roman province of Upper Germany, not far from today's Frankfurt. The settlement was completely empty by 260 AD, and it was discovered only in the second half of the 20th century during the construction of Römerstadt. The skeletons in the well were found in 1993 during extensive excavations in the Hedehan area. A well 10 meters deep was located in the courtyard of a stone house and was littered with bricks, ceramics, and other rubbish. At the bottom lay the bones of a young woman, a man 25-30 years old, and a child two three years old. All three died of head injuries around 250 AD. The find quickly attracted attention and became known as the murder in Nida. In 2011, it was presented at the Crime in the Roman Empire exhibition at the Frankfurt Archaeological Museum. 
Frankfurt forensic scientist Constanza Niss reconstructed the face of the murdered woman, and specialists from the Frankfurt Police Department began investigating the details of the crime. Apparently, fatal injuries were inflicted with blunt objects while the victims lay on the ground. Judging by the absence of injuries on the hands of the adults, the dead did not resist. They were either tied up or were already unconscious. The researchers believe that the victims belonged to the local population. Their death came came at a troubled time when the Romans were already gradually leaving the city. Numerous buildings stood empty and some areas were abandoned. The raids of the Germans led to casualties among the inhabitants of the cities. Perhaps as a result of one of these raids, these three were killed, but local crime could also be the cause. DNA analysis showed that the woman is related to the child, but the man is not his father. Unfortunately, we are unlikely to find out the details of the drama that has unfolded. Ancient Catacombs of Lardaria in Sicily, between the cities of Ispica and Modica, there was a long canyon with caves and archaeological sites, Cava d'Ispica. It crosses the landscape for 13 kilometers. Its depth, in some places, is about 100 meters, width up to 500 meters. The presence of traces of human activity in the canyon is estimated from the Bronze Age to 1693. Here you can see ancient necropolises, cave churches and Christian catacombs, dwellings and monastic Caddies, historical villages. Catacombs of Lardaria is a cave with 464 tombs carved into the rock. The cave was based from the 3rd century BC to the 5th century AD as a hypogean underground necropolis. The area of the catacombs is more than 500 meters square. They are part of the largest Sicilian necropolis and the catacombs of San Giovanni, which are located in the city of Syracuse. The necropolis has two entrances. It is divided into three galleries, which are filled with niches, tombs with a canopy, and tombs at ground level. Door to the Underworld I suggest going to Siberia, which is a very unusual place where you can meet tigers or polar bears, walruses or even leopards. But if you delve into the endless taiga, you can stumble upon a huge funnel in the ground. Moreover, it is so large and deep that it can be seen from space. This huge sinkhole or hollow is called by the locals the Gates to the Underworld or Gates to Hell, although its official name sounds less impressive. The Batagaika Crater it is located in the Verkhoyansk region of Yakutia. The dimensions of this depression are truly impressive, as it stretches for a distance of a kilometer and reaches a depth of 100 meters. Therefore, it is deservedly the largest permafrost crater in the world. At first glance, it may seem that this crater was formed after the fall of an asteroid, but in fact, it is not. It is assumed that it appeared as a result of erosion in a natural climatic phenomena called thermoclasty. This process does not start on its own. In this case, scientists suggest that deforestation in the area in the 1960s was the reason for the thawing of permafrost, although the exact cause is unknown. Known. The most amazing thing is that the Badagaika crater continues to grow, expanding annually by 10-20 meters. No one knows what exactly became the catalyst for the appearance of this depression. Maybe under its permafrost, which is 650,000 years old, someone is waking up. Atlantean metal books the ethnologist, entrepreneur and collector was born in Hungary, but he spent most of his life in South America, where he made a sensational discovery. In 1955, Janusz Juan Moritz discovered an amazing ancient underground utility system. The public learned about it only after a few years, since the researcher was by the requirement of known disclosure. The self-taught scientist found underground roads and tunnels that stretched under Ecuador, Argentina, and Peru. Their walls and ceilings were not just processed, but carefully polished. The path ended in huge underground holes. In one of these, Moritz allegedly found ancient books made of metal with sheets of 96 by 48 centimeters. In the scientific community, they are called placards. Each was covered with unknown signs and symbols. Moritz himself and his followers believed that this way was how the library of ancient civilization, 
possibly the Atlanteans, was discovered. In accordance with an alternative version, the prophecies of the Incas are the knowledge of representatives of other planets who arrived on Earth the recorded in the books. In the center of the hall was furniture made of an unknown material. The original enthusiast also came across a golden figurine of an aircraft, which was sent to the Bogota Museum. After studying by experts, it became clear that the material of the figurine, which resembles an airplane in appearance, is pure gold, which in this form does not occur in nature, but contains impurities in the form of silver, copper, iron, and other metals. In 1976, the story received a new round. The Americans, supporters of Moritz, organized a new expedition, choosing astronaut Neil Armstrong, a media person, as the official leader. The expedition successfully reached there, but did not find any library with huge metal books. But in the tunnels, they found a burial room of 1500 BC with burials, and in parallel, scientists catalogued about 400 plant species. Moritz died in 1991 and never told anyone the exact coordinates of the underground library, which supposedly belonged to the Atlantic. Read this video with your thumb up, and then in the next video, you will see even more interesting and unusual finds of archaeologists. Leave your kind comments below the video. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!